Now we're going to take a look at the concept of density. And this is an important concept in our everyday life, and it has a lot of merit in other sciences such as biology and geology. Before we get to density, let's look at the two components that make up density, mass and volume. These are two important characteristics of matter, but by themselves they cannot be used to identify what type of matter something is. So for example, if you have 10 grams of a substance, the mass of 10 grams gives you no information. Or if you have 10 milliliters of a liquid, again, that does not give you enough information to determine what type of matter it is. However, if we use the two together, then we can get some more information. And here we have some data for the mass and volume of a sample of brass. And let me just point out that these are horrible significant figures. I did not write this slide and I can't get in to change it, but these are just absolutely terrible significant figures. There should be decimal points at the end of these whole numbers with trailing zeros. But anyway, here is our mass of the sample and when there's 20 grams of brass, it takes up a volume of 2.4 centimeters cubed. When we have 32 grams of this brass, then it has a volume of 3.8. 40 grams, 4.8. We notice that as we increase the mass, the volume increases. And in fact, it increases to the same extent each time. Every time you increase the mass, you increase the volume, and it follows the straight line, which is actually the density of the material. Density is defined by the mass divided by the volume. It's the ratio of mass to volume. The denser a substance is, the more mass there is per volume, and the less dense a substance is, the less mass per volume. So an example of a dense solid would be lead or gold, and an example of a low density material would be air. In a lot of volume, there's not a lot of mass of air. Now let's look at units. When we're talking about solids, the units that we use are grams per centimeter cubed. Now because density is a ratio of mass to volume, our units reflect that. And density units will always be some mass unit divided by some volume unit. And we just remember that a centimeter cubed is equal to a milliliter. Liquids is typically grams per milliliter, per milliliter and these two units are essentially the same, but generally because centimeter cubed indicates a solid, that's why we use it. Gases, which in our, are in general much less dense than solids and liquids, have the units of grams per liter. Now we'll look at how the volume of solid can be determined um, in the next slide, but let me just address this. In general, solids are have a density greater than liquids. Really, liquids and solids have densities that are kind of in the same range. For example, you have many solids that actually float on water, such as different types of wood, and ice actually floats on water. Um, but, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. But usually solids are packed a little bit more tightly in terms of molecules than liquids, so they have higher density. And these both have much higher densities than gases do. Now let's look at measuring volume. If we're looking at a liquid, we can use a graduated cylinder. This graduated cylinder allows us to uh, determine the volume. And when we're measuring volume, we always look at the bottom of the line. This is what's known as a meniscus. Water in any graduated cylinder is going to creep up the side, and we always look at the bottom to determine where we measure it. So we can measure volume just by, in, for a liquid, by putting it in a graduated cylinder. If we had an irregular solid, we could place that solid in the graduated cylinder, and the water level would rise the same amount of volume that was displaced by the solid. So when we look back here and said volume can be determined by water displacement, that's what we mean. We put a solid in a graduated cylinder, and we determine how much the water rises, and whatever that amount is, that's the volume of the substance that is submerged. 
Okay, now let's take a look at heating objects. Heating objects causes all objects to expand. This is because as objects um, get more energy, the molecules move, and when they move more, they take up more space. Heating does not affect the mass. Heating does not affect the mass. So how would heating have an effect on density? Well, because heating causes objects to expand, the volume is going to rise. So the same amount of material will take up more volume. So density goes down if something gets heated. So that's why hot air balloons rise. Even though we're using air, which has the same density, once we heat it, those air molecules take up more volume, and they're the, therefore they're less dense. So that's why hot air balloons rise, because they have a density less than the surrounding air. Okay, now this is an important slide, because this gives you the three different ways we can use the definition of volume to solve for unknowns. And the slide has two different parts, I guess, for the left and the right-brained um, student. Let's look at the left-hand part here first. Here are the formulas that are used to calculate density, volume, and mass if we're given mass and volume, mass and density, density and volume. So to calculate density, we need mass and volume. We can calculate volume if we're given the mass and the density. We divide the mass by the density and we come up with volume. And we can also calculate mass if we have density and we multiply it by volume. Now we'll look at details, we'll look at details in a detailed um, manner at these different equations. And the important thing to remember when we're doing these is our units have to cancel out. When we multiply our density by volume, we should end up with mass units. When we divide mass by density, we should end up with volume units. And of course here, our units don't cancel out. We'll end up with grams over volume, which are density units. And over here, this is what the author of these slides calls solution maps. If you have mass and volume, you can get density. If you have mass and density, you can get volume. If you have volume and density, you can get mass. So let's look at this example. A man gives a woman an engagement ring and tells her that it is made of platinum. Noting that the ring felt a little light, the woman decides to perform a test to determine the ring's density before giving him an answer about marriage. She places the ring on a balance and finds that it has a mass of 5.84 grams. She then finds that the ring displaces 0.556 centimeters cubed or milliliters of water. Is the ring made of platinum? The density of platinum is 21.4 grams per centimeter cubed. So take a second, pause the slide, and figure out if the ring is actually density, <laughs> if the ring is actually platinum. So to figure this out, you use the equation mass divided by volume is density. If you have mass and volume, you can get to density through this equation. So our mass was 5.84 grams, our volume was 0.556 centimeter cubed, and the answer is 10.5 grams per centimeter cubed expressed in correct sig figs. This has three, this has three, your answer should have three. So this clearly is not platinum, and so I guess marriage is not going to happen.